Hi, and welcome back to my channel, Learning Biology with Dr. Vanessa, where we take difficult biological concepts and make them easy to understand. When you think of the human body, what comes to mind? Maybe it's the heartbeat in your chest, how you can move air in and out of your lungs in a single breath, or the soreness in your muscles after a workout. But what if I told you that everything you feel, every movement you make, every thought you think is the result of a highly coordinated network of systems, thousands of structures working in harmony to keep you alive and functioning. In this video, we'll start our series in an intro to the human body. We'll explore the foundational concepts of human anatomy and physiology. We're going to begin by looking at the levels of structural organization how the body is built from the smallest units to the complete human form. Then we'll walk through an overview of the major body systems and their essential functions. Finally, we'll wrap up with the defining characteristics of what it means to be a living human organism. This is where your understanding of the human body begins. So let's zoom in and see exactly what we're made of. To understand how the body functions, we need to understand how it's built. The human body is organized into levels of structural complexity, starting from the simplest and then building to the most complex. We begin at the chemical level, the most basic level of structural organization. This includes atoms, which are the smallest units of matter that still retain their unique chemical properties. Examples of atoms include carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen, elements that make up most of the human body. When atoms join together, they form molecules such as water, oxygen gas, and carbon dioxide. These small molecules can then link into much larger, more complex structures called macromolecules. These include essential biological compounds like proteins, lipids, carbohydrates, and nucleic acids like DNA. Together, these chemical building blocks form the raw materials of life, and they lay the foundation for everything else that follows in the organization of the human body. Next, we move up to the cellular level. Cells are the smallest living units in the human body capable of carrying out all the basic processes that define life, such as metabolism, growth, and reproduction. In fact, nothing simpler than a cell is considered truly alive. The cell is the smallest unit of life. The human body contains many different types of cells, each uniquely structured to perform specific functions. For example, muscle cells contract to produce movement, nerve cells transmit electrical signals, and skin cells form protective barriers. While they all share some common features, their specialized roles are what allow the body to function as a coordinated whole. Tissues are made of groups of similar cells that perform specific coordinated functions. The four main tissue types in the body are epithelial, connective, muscle, and nervous tissue. Epithelial tissue covers body surfaces, lines hollow organs and cavities, and forms glands. Connective tissue supports, binds, and protects body structures. It also stores energy and transports substances, and it's rich in blood vessels that supply other tissues. Muscular tissue is responsible for movement, whether it's voluntary motion like walking or involuntary actions like your heartbeat. Muscle tissue contracts to make things move, and in doing so, generates heat. Nervous tissue is the body's communication system. It carries information from one part of the body to another through nerve impulses or action potentials. At the organ level, different types of tissues come together to form organs. An organ must contain at least two types of tissues, but most have all four. These tissues work in harmony to carry out complex tasks. Examples include the heart, which pumps blood through coordinated muscle contractions lined with epithelial tissue and supported by connective and nervous tissue. 
The skin, which is your largest organ, also protects senses and helps regulate body temperature through layers of epithelial, connective, muscle, and nervous tissues. When multiple organs work together to perform a major function, they form an organ system. Each system is a team of specialized organs collaborating to carry out vital tasks that keep the body functioning. For example, the digestive system includes the mouth, stomach, intestines, and more working together to break down food, absorb nutrients, and eliminate waste. The respiratory system, made up of the lungs, trachea, and diaphragm, allows for the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide so your cells can perform cellular respiration. Sometimes an organ is part of more than one system. For example, the hypothalamus is part of the nervous system where it processes signals from the brain, but it also plays a critical role in the endocrine system by regulating hormone release through its control of the pituitary gland. The final level, the organismal level, is the entire human body functioning as an integrated living being made up of trillions of coordinated cells. Now that we've talked about how the body is organized, let's look at how it operates through body systems. Here, I will give you an overview of the 11 major body systems. But as we move through anatomy and physiology, you will learn more about the anatomy of each system, what it is made up of, or the system structure, and the physiology of each system, how the system works. What you'll learn is that even though we study these systems individually, the body operates as an integrated whole, each system constantly communicating and working in coordination with the others to maintain health and balance. First is the integumentary system. This includes your skin, hair, and nails. It protects the body, helps regulate temperature, and detects sensations. Next is the skeletal system. This system includes your bones and joints. It provides support, protects organs, and allows movement in conjunction with muscles. It also stores minerals and produces blood cells. Then we have the muscular system. This system is mostly composed of skeletal muscle, which is voluntary, meaning you have control to move it. However, it also includes smooth and cardiac muscles, which are involuntary muscles that you do not control. It enables movement, maintains posture, and produces heat. Then there's the nervous system. This system consists of the brain, spinal cord, and nerves. It processes information by sending nerve impulses, allowing the body to respond quickly to changes and maintain regulation of vital functions. The endocrine system. This system includes hormone producing glands such as the hypothalamus, pituitary gland, and thymus to name a few. It uses hormones to regulate processes like growth, metabolism, and reproduction. It works slower than the nervous system, but has longer lasting effects. Then there's the cardiovascular system, which circulates blood, delivering oxygen and nutrients while removing wastes. The heart and blood vessels are the key players here. The lymphatic and immune systems help to defend against disease, return excess fluid to the blood, and includes lymph nodes, the spleen, and a variety of immune cells. The respiratory system includes the lungs. It is responsible for gas exchange, bringing in oxygen, and expelling carbon dioxide. The digestive system includes organs such as the mouth, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, and large intestine, as well as others, and its function is to break down the food that we eat into nutrients that the body can absorb and eliminate waste. The urinary system consists of the kidneys, ureters, bladder, and urethra. It filters blood and removes waste through urine. It also regulates water, electrolytes, and pH. And finally, there's the reproductive system. This system enables the production of offspring. It includes organs like the ovaries, testes, uterus, and more. 
So what exactly makes the human body or any living thing alive? All living organisms share a set of defining characteristics. The first is metabolism. Metabolism is all of the chemical reactions that occur in the body. This includes catabolism, where complex substances are broken down into simpler ones to release energy, and anabolism, where the body builds complex molecules from simpler ones to create new structures and store energy. Together, these processes keep your body functioning and growing. Then there's responsiveness. This is the ability of the body to detect and respond to changes in its internal or external environment. For example, pulling your hand away from a hot surface is a rapid response that protects your body from harm. Then there's movement, which is the motion of the whole body, not just walking, but also internal movements like blood flow or the contraction of your stomach. Then there's growth, which is an increase in body size resulting from an increase in size or number of existing cells or both. Then there's differentiation. Differentiation is the process by which unspecialized cells become specialized, like stem cells becoming neurons or muscle cells. And finally, there's reproduction, which refers to one, the formation of new cells for growth, repair, or replacement, which occurs through cell division, or two, the creation of a whole new organism, which occurs through the fertilization of an ovum by a sperm to form a zygote. These characteristics help distinguish living organisms from non-living matter and explain how complex systems like the human body continue to function, adapt, and survive. Understanding the human body begins with understanding how it's organized, what systems keep it running, and why it behaves like a living adaptive system. Whether you're pursuing a career in healthcare, preparing for an exam, or simply want to understand how your body works, this foundational knowledge is essential and it's just the beginning. Because the more you understand about your own biology, the better prepared you are to make decisions that support your health, your future, and your curiosity. If this video helped bring clarity to a complex topic, I hope you'll subscribe and stay connected. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.